Well, for you that say we didn't have an interpreter, just put it up there for you, right? You knew exactly what he was singing, and I appreciate Brother Jose. I asked him, I said, since it's God and country there, are you singing in Spanish or English? He said, Spanish. So that would be all right. Be all right. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9 tonight. Been preaching on faith, and uh, I know this, and you know this. The Bible said without faith it is impossible to please God. You just can't do it. There's no, no pleasing God outside of the realm of faith. And uh, there's been much definition about it, many ideas about it. But um, we looked last week at the stifling of faith, how our faith is stifled from certain things in life. And I want to look at strengthening of faith uh, this evening. In Mark chapter 9, Begin in verse 14, this will be a very familiar passage because last year our theme verse was taken out of this text. And I want to set the, the, the stage for you. In Mark chapter 9, it's when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration. He had taken these disciples up. They had seen the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you would have thought that seeing that, it would have changed their life to where they would never not trust Christ. And then they come down off the mountain and one of the first things they run into in verse 14, the Bible said when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. So they came off the mountain, and here's the disciples, and uh, he, he comes to them, and the Bible said in verse 15, straightway all the people when they beheld him were greatly amazed and running to him saluted him. Amen. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him <coughs> and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. He asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him, but it, if thou canst do anything. Notice what he said, if you can do anything. He didn't even say if you could get this demon out of him, if you could heal him of this. He said, if you can do anything at all. Anything to help. He said, have compassion on us and help us. If you can do something, just have compassion on us. doesn't have to be the greatest miracle, but if you can do something for us, just have some compassion on us and help us. Right? Verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. All things. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said uh, with tears, Boy, that'd be something, wouldn't it, if we get our tears back? He said, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was uh, as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up and he arose and when he uh, was come into the house his disciples asked his, him privately why could not we cast him out and he said unto them this kind come, can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting yes, sir. Amen. so in this scripture we're studying a man's faith and in this study there's some priceless truths we learn this man's faith must flourish in tragedy see it was probably very easy for him I doubt it was easy for him because the Bible said this child had been this way since birth since a young child and so there was always this battle this tragedy <coughs> this problem that he dealt with and it got to the point where finally he decided that the only solution was Jesus and so the same Jesus as was transfigured in splendor triumphed over sickness and two miracles were taking place really uh, at the same time the first is obvious the triumph over sickness but then the, uh, the second Jesus won a triumph over faith yes. 
and see that the, we, we look at the miracle of sickness and we'll see God heal somebody and we'll see that as a great miracle but really the, the miracle of faith is pretty amazing when you think about it that he's asking us to believe something we can't see and believe as it has already been done. So this man's faith is strengthened and his son is healed. And that's really what we're in need of today. Uh, uh, we may never see the physical healing of someone with our prayer, but the fact that God is still answering prayer should strengthen our faith. And we'll need that faith to be strengthened for the days ahead. And so God desires this growth in each of us. This guy's not a super Christian. He's just an average guy who had a need that went to the Lord Jesus and he had a measure of faith, but then he said uh, he wanted his faith strengthened. And all of us tonight have a measure of faith, I would say. Matter of fact, if you're saved, you have a measure of faith. But what I'm asking is, are we believing him for all things, or are we saying if you can just do something? And so three things I want to share with you tonight. First of all is the rival of faith. Notice here that this man had an expectant faith. In other words, he expected his son to be healed. And if not, why bring him, right? I mean, you go to the doctor, you don't say, I'm going to take my kid to the doctor, but I don't think they're going to do anything. If you're going to do that, save the copay, right? If, if you didn't think Jesus could save you, why ask him? If you don't think Jesus can meet your need, then why pray? And so there was at least an expectation that God would do something and so he expected his son to be healed. He wasn't asking for money. He wasn't asking for wealth. He was asking for this specific thing. And I'm afraid a lot of times we pray. We pray in generalities instead of something specific. We'll say, God, bless my children. Well, what do you want him to bless them with, right? And so abandonment. See, he went where he thought Jesus would be. He wasn't going, Brother Matt, to see the disciples. He was going to where he thought Jesus would be. Well, how did he, why did he think that? Because his people were around there. I mean, we ought to be able to come to church and, and, and get some help in the house of God because this is where God's people are. Amen? But see, Jesus wasn't there yet. And so he went with the expectation to see Jesus, but the people of God could not meet the need that only Jesus could meet. And it's amazing how often, Brother Jerry, we try to meet people's needs and they'll say, I, I want your advice, but we don't go to the Word of God. Right. We give them what we think instead of what the Word of God says. And he's really the only one that can meet the need that people have. And so here is the abandonment and the fact he went to where he thought Jesus would be, but he wasn't there. Well, who was there? His disciples. Well, then there was the ability. The disciples were not able to do what Jesus could do. Now friend, may I say that you can't do what Jesus can do. And when you, when you expect someone to meet the need that only Jesus can meet, I promise you, you'll always come up with a lack. You'll always come up in a deficit. You'll always be wanting more. But when you go to Jesus to meet the need, listen, you, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen? We quote that, but here's the thing. No one should be able to rob you of your joy. No one should be able to rob you of your strength if he gives it, amen. So, so here, the ability, the disciples had limited ability, but God had unlimited ability. And so when we're looking at people to solve our problems, again, we're coming up on an election year. And there's people going, man, if we just elect this guy, he'll fix it. He won't fix it. We're in such dire straits and dire need that, my friend, only God can fix what's going on in our lives. And so there was the ability. The disciples lacked ability. So, so here he is. He's going for one thing. I need to get my son help. He brings him to God's people, right? And, and by the way, let me say this. You ready for this? You can be in church with the absence of the presence of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. You can go to church and it not be church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, sir. See, we, we, we think this building has some kind of power to it. Right. We don't pray, Brother Chad, we don't get our hearts right. We don't come expecting God to do anything. We walk in the door and going, okay, well, 
If, if, if you're going to do it, God, I'm in the building, right? I'm, I'm among God's people. Preacher, you studied. Choir, you've practiced. Musicians, you've worked on stuff. Uh, Brother Jose, thank you for the song. But I didn't do anything to come here expecting anything to be done. The disciples had not prepared to do what only God can do, so the presence of God wasn't there. They just, amen. So, so here they are, the accusation of these scribes, they challenged every work and word of Christ. Well, is that not where we live today? God can't do it. Even among, Brother Tim, even among God's people, there's people, it might, it might even be sitting here tonight saying, yeah, we're in the last days, God can't do that. Amen. Nope, nope. Uh, those, those days of revival are over. Those days of, you know, churches being full and bus ministries being full, they're over. Children's ministry, that's a thing of the past. Nope, you got to compromise. You got to have everything, new music, got to have. Preacher, we, we got to go contemporary for us to grow. No, no. What we're saying is we're stop relying on the power of God and we're becoming just like these scribes and we're criticizing and we're looking for things to c- criticize about the work of God. So this one man came expecting something. The disciples didn't expect God could do it through them. The scribes didn't expect anything. One man expected something. Let me ask you this. What would you come expecting tonight? I mean, some of you hadn't expected anything all day. You just showed up. When you expect nothing, don't get mad, yeah, don't get mad when you don't get nothing. How many times you pray, not expect God to do anything, then he doesn't do it, so see, I told you, right? This guy came, and he was fully expecting someone to heal his son. So there was an expectant faith, but it was because of his, an existing faith. In other words, uh, he, had, he was, had the ability to believe that God could do it. He was challenging the existence of God's power. Here's what I mean. He was willing to say that I, I'm, I'm re- willing to step out into some unknown realm to believe that God can do something that nobody else could do. Let me ask you this, are you? Are you? What do you believe in God for for our church? Listen to me. Some of you got nothing invested. Some of you got, you say, what do you mean, preacher? I've been given. Yeah, but you, you don't have anything invested spiritually. You don't pray for the church. You don't pray for your pastor. You don't pray for the missionaries. You don't pray for the bus ministry. You don't pray for the Spanish ministry. You, you've got nothing invested. You're just here. You are a consumer instead of a producer. That's the world we live in. I'm not critical. Hey. You go, you go to a restaurant, what do you want? I want to be served, yeah. right? Yeah. You go anywhere, you want to be served, right? So it's no different. We come to church, we want to be served, right. right? We don't want to do the serving. We want to, we want to be served. Yeah. And, and, and so you have to come with an existing faith, believing God's going to do something for you before he'll do something. And here's what he said he said, uh, he, he asked, in verse 16, the Bible said, he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered, Master, I brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, gnasheth with his uh, teeth, and pineth away. And I, I spake to thy disciples that they could cast him out. They could not. And he answered, said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And so here he is. And this man finally, he says, Lord, just have compassion on us. His affection, he, 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 he went to the Lord's affection. Have compassion on us. Have, have mercy on us. I don't, I don't care what you do, just do something, right? Are, are we yet at the place? Yes. People say, well, I'm going to tell God what he needs to do. You don't have the right to tell God what he needs to do. Right. What we ought to do is say, God, whatever you, if you just give us some, some crumbs, if you just give us some scraps, if you just have 
some compassion. If you just give us something, hey man, it would be worth that. And, and the action is this. He said, help us. Help us. Just help us. I think sometimes we take that boldness where to come before the Lord as, as an arrogance. We ought to say, Lord, help us. Help us tonight. Help us with wisdom. Help us with strength. Help us with our faith. Help us with our giving. Help us with, with our family. Help us with our church. Help us uh, have a soul for, for uh, a passion for souls. Help us, Lord. We need help. So number two is the refining of faith. Now notice what he said. The, 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 the Bible said here, he said, I spake in verse 18 to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And they brought him in verse 20 unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foamy. And he said, asked his father, he said, how long is it ago since this came unto him, he said, of a child? Well, here's, here's the thing. The refining of faith starts with this, the refining of patience. He had to wait all these years to even come to where Jesus was supposed to be. And then when he got there, Jesus wasn't there. So he had to wait longer for Jesus to meet the need that he had. Now, can we be honest tonight? We're not real good with patience, are we? I mean, can you imagine several generations back when you had to cook on a, a wood stove? Yes, sir. Messiah was going, yes, I can, <laughs> right? We'd lose our mind today because right. we like to throw stuff in the microwave and warm it up, right? Or, or you, even if you got a gas stove, you just, man, turn that thing, push it, boom, flame comes up. We don't like to wait. Right, we'll go to the restaurant and you go to speak in this box and you go around the window and they shove some aluminum foil with a, a sandwich out at you. Right? We don't like to be patient. I said it before, when, when the internet got here, man, you had to, you had to use your, you, nobody could be on the phone. You had to hit the dial up, it'd make all this noise, sound like an alien's coming through your wall. And then it would load the page and it wouldn't just pop up. It'd start at the top and it, it was like a, you better, man, you better be sure you got the right address in there because it's going to take forever if you had to click to the next page. You might remember the phone that you did this. Right? You got to the end of that cord, praise God, and it, it would hang you like a noose. We don't like that anymore. We have no patience, right? We want it now. Everything now. We approach God the same way. God, I want it now. I came to your disciples. I want it now. But they had to wait. He had to wait. See, I brought, here's what he said. He said, I brought my son to thee, but you weren't here. How many times have you prayed and it didn't seem like God was there? How many times have you prayed and it didn't seem like God answered? How many times have you come to church expecting God that day to do something for you and you walked out and you said, God, it wasn't there today. It wasn't there today. But God still planted something in your heart so later on down the road he spoke to you. See, don't, don't, don't question when God does things. You just be faithful and have patience. And the disciples couldn't help him so he waited on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. You know why we make so many mistakes? Because we don't wait on God. Let me tell you this. 22 years of pastoring. And I'm not saying this to brag and my wife will tell you. 22 years of pastoring, there's been many Sunday nights I've gone home and I said, I'm done. I'm done. If God will give me another church to pastor, I'll go. You say, well, preacher, listen, I'm made out of the same stuff you are. But see, when you go in the, in the defeat, you never see the victories. You better have some patience, praise God. So, so your family, husbands, wives, man, you, you, there's nobody in here, I'm guessing, that's had a perfect marriage that you hadn't argued. Brother Bart, don't you, don't you look at me that way. Your wife was going like this while you... 
but don't quit. Don't give up on the last turn because you'll miss the victory lap. Amen. Same thing with church. Don't give up. Don't give up on your kids. Don't give up on your husband. Don't give up on your wife. Don't give up on the friend you've been praying for. Just keep on. Listen, the refining of faith's patience is you've got to wait on God. God's not on your timetable. You're on his. Amen. Think about this. If one day is a thousand years to the Lord, right? We, we want it in one second. God doesn't get in a hurry. The greatest thing you can do is learn to just trust God. You say, well, that's easy, preacher. You just don't know. I do know. Listen, our family is the same as yours. Our life is the same as yours. Our health issues, we have them too. Our financial issues, we have them too. But I'm just telling you that, that God always wins if you'll hang in there. See, after the spirit was cast out, Jesus tells the disciples that the answer to the problem came by what? Prayer and fasting. You know what prayer and fasting takes? Patience. It wasn't just the man that didn't have patience. The disciples didn't. The followers of Christ didn't have patience enough to pray and fast. They thought that because they'd been around Jesus, they could just go up and say, get out of him. And it didn't happen that way. Listen, why did God tell us to pray and fast? Because it takes patience, and patience pleases God. The confirmation of the Lord's presence requires patience. Then there's the refining of faith's process. Well, what does that mean? Well, there are certain elements found in biblical faith. There's the responsibility of faith that God can. This man would not have come if he didn't think God could. Right? Let me ask something. Do you believe God can? Well, here's the other part. Do you believe God will? See, his part is God can. Our, our part is God will. There's a, the responsibility is to trust him. I believe God can, but not for me. Well, why are you different? This man came to the Lord and said, Listen, I've got something on my heart. It wasn't for him, it's for his kid. And he said, I believe you can do it. Matter of fact, I brought him to your disciples. They couldn't do it. And he looked at them. He said, You're a faithless generation. And he said, Bring him to me. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the embarrassment on those disciples when the Lord said, Just bring him over here? Right? So the resource of faith is the man would settle for anything. Remember what he said? Uh, he said this. He said, if thou, in verse 22, if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us, help us. Right? If you do something, just That's right. make him know he don't hurt anymore. Yeah. That would be something. Give me, the, give me the wisdom, the knowledge to know how to help him. That'd be something. Right? What do, you, what do you ask God for? See, we'll ask him for something, right? Lord, send some visitors here. How many you want? One? Right? Lord, send us some new riders on the bus. How many you want? What, what are you praying for? Yes, Lord, give Brother Jose some, some new people in the Spanish church. How many? Yes. Brother Justin, how, let's give Brother Justin a, a couple more kids in the children's. How many you want? Right? Good. Sure would be nice to take on some missionaries. How many you want? See, we don't think big enough. That's right. How many do you want? <laughs> if you can do anything, Lord... Just something. If you could send one visitor, praise God, we'd be sure would be happy. Was that the only person going to hell out there? One person? Right. Oh, if you'd give us one missionary, Lord, we'd be so happy if we'd just take on one more. Is that all that's out there? Is that all the people going to hell in, in the whole world is one? Amen. One country? One region? That's right. We're limiting what God can do because of our faith, not because of his ability. That's this man said, Lord, if you can do something, here's what the Lord said. He said, if thou, he said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. That's right. Is that in your Bible? Yes, now, you a Bible believer? Right. Well, what part of that is God lying about? 
He said, if you can believe, right? If you can believe, canst is a continual process. It is a present process. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. He wasn't excluding anybody. He was pointing and saying, if there's one of you that can believe, like this guy believes, what I'm going to do for him, I'll do for you. You know what they're saying? Oh, no, Lord, you can't do it for me. Are you any different? You say, well, preacher, you just don't understand my abilities and my lack of abilities. What is it? Well, I'm not, a, I'm not an eloquent speaker. Great. Moses wasn't either. Right? What else you got? Well, I'm not a preacher. Okay. So what? I, 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 I get nervous around people. Okay. I don't have the finances to give to missions. Got something, don't you? That widow gave two mites. See what I'm saying? We got all the excuses why God can't do something with us and for us. Got them all. And God's not buying them. Now I'm going to tell you something. You ready for this? The only thing limiting what God can do in your life is your faith. That's it. You say, well, I don't have, I can't preach like you. Didn't nobody ask you to. I can't run a bus. Why not? I can't knock on a door. Why? Is your hand broke? I can't witness. I don't know the words to say. Well, you talk about everything else. Why can't you talk about what God did for you? Right? I can't sing in the choir. Why not? I don't have a good voice. Says who? See what I'm saying? We, we limit what, because it's easier to do nothing than to ask God for big things. Listen, every one of you bus workers, you know what you all do? You ought to start praying God fill the bus up. Not give me a rider, give me a whole bus. We need more. Hey, we need a whole nother bus preacher because our bus route's gotten so big. But you know what? Well, ain't nobody riding a bus anymore. You know what we ought to, hey, we need, we, got, we, need to, we need to have a whole nother building for the children's ministry because we've got so many kids. Well, ain't no kids coming to church anymore, preacher. We need to build a new choir loft because the choir's so big. Don't nobody want to sing in the choir anymore, preacher. We need to build a new, new teen room because... I don't know why teens want to come to old-fashioned independent Baptist church got standards. They want to go to church where they can run around half-naked and go. all they do is have fun on Sunday nights. When did God stop being God? That's my question. So the only thing limiting what God can do is what we have faith in that, that he'll do. Right? I mean, this. he said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. Well, was that just for him or was that for us today? Well, I choose to believe it's for us. If all, if all scripture is given, uh, is given by inspiration, right? I mean, if it's, all good, if it's all for our instruction, if it's all for our, our learning, why would it not be for us? If it's profitable for me, why would this not be profitable for me? Well, it's not in the Gospels. I mean, it's, it's not in the Epistles, Brother Russell, so therefore it doesn't apply to us. Well, then... Take everything from the book of Acts on back and tear it out of your Bible and throw it in the garbage can. Either it's all for you or none of it's for you. So then number three, quickly, is the reviving of faith. Well, what happened to this young man? The Bible said in verse 17, or I'm sorry, I went, I went all the way to 1 Corinthians, praise God. I need to get back to Mark. The Bible said, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead. Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast him out? And he said, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. 
So, you think this guy had a pretty good faith when he walked out of there? I mean, I feel like if it were me and I brought my kid to the Lord and he was possessed by a spirit, nobody else could help him. I brought him to the preacher. He couldn't do anything for him. Finally, I brought him to Jesus and he, he cast that foul spirit out of him. I don't know. I'm hoping. Brother Randy, I'm hoping I wouldn't have a problem trusting Jesus after that. I mean, that's a pretty big deal, right? So in that reviving of faith, there's healing. There was physical healing. There was spiritual healing. The word, of, the word of God brings healing. That's what he said. The Bible said when Jesus saw the people and he charged thee, he charged thee in verse number 25, what does that mean? It means he, he spoke the word of God. There was also a happiness there. There was a worshipful spirit replaced by, replaced a woeful spirit. When he came, man, he was sad. When he left, he was happy. There's a lot of folks, let's be honest, say they're saved. I've never seen them happy. I passed some folks a long time. I've never seen them smile. I don't even know if they got teeth. Except maybe some they carry in their pocket. I don't know. I've never seen them smile, Brother Junior. And then there was hope. There's hope that Jesus is who he says he is. This guy, he was, he was testing him. He said, I brought him to your disciples. They couldn't do anything for him. So I brought him to thee. I brought him to thee. They couldn't help him. So I'm trusting you to do it. What do you want me to do? If you can do anything at all, we'd be happy. Just a little crumb of something, we'd be happy. He said, no, it, all things are possible. Well, I still believe that. I'm, Brother Shane, I'm just not buying. I'm just not buying what they're selling. Right. I'm just not. I'm not going to. You can if you want to, but I'm not. Yes, well, Chad, when I got here 22 years ago, they told me, don't take that little church. That, <laughs> that church got a bad reputation. It's been sitting there for 40 years, been a little tiny building. They... They, man, they're like a buzzsaw going through pastors. You better not take that church. But it's where God put me. Right. We built the first building. Can't build that. Don't have any money. Bought this. I'm saying I've seen God do too much in 22 years. Amen. You can stick your lip out if you want to and think God can't do it. But I, listen, don't rain on my parade. Glory to God. Right? That's why I don't, I don't want to be around negative people all the time. Give me something good, hallelujah. Man, I can turn on Fox News and hear the bad. Right? So I'm just saying, I, I still believe Brother Jimmy, Brother Jose, I still believe God can do it. What, what's hindering what God wants to do right here is sitting in this room. Our faith. Our faith. Let's stand together. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. God spoke to your heart tonight. You come. You come. Sunday school teachers, bus workers, children's church workers, choir members, Spanish church workers. I mean, all of y'all to be on the altar saying, God, I want more. I want to see you do more around here. I want to see you do more with my family. I want to see you do more in our community. I want to see souls saved. More missions. More bus ministry. More Spanish ministry. More children's ministry. Bigger choir. Church full. Building program number 18. Bigger youth group. Soul saved every service. I mean, what, a, what is limiting God from doing what he wants to? Here's just us. 
What do you want to see? Preachers called out of the church, missionaries sent out of the church? Absolutely. The preacher, if they go, what are we going to do? God send more. My question would be, why wouldn't God want to do it? If he gets glory. Now, if we get glory for it, no. But why wouldn't he want to do it? Thank you, Lord. Even in our small faith, you do great things. Lord, we want to believe you for even greater things so you get glory. Increase our faith. Strengthen our faith. Remind us of the prayers you've answered so that we'll trust you for even greater things. Thank you for being good to us and being long-suffering toward us. Help our unbelief. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.